And just that same Elijah that, that thought that he would, where are those few sheep? I don't know if you read that story far enough, you'll find out that that big brother and the other two that were in the military, they were with David when he was running from Saul. Now, I don't believe what I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell you right now. David had to look out for his older siblings, if you will. Because just like Saul was after him, he was after all of them. Read the story. You want to track the track. It won't say that his brothers ran. It won't say that they went with him. But if his mother and father and his household went, guess what? His brothers went. God has a way that's mighty sweet. You laughing at me today, but you gonna be. You might need me tomorrow. Don't tell me what you say out your mouth to me. I'm just. I'm. I'm cutting up now. You don't know who you are gonna need. I said you don't know who you gonna need. You raising your children today, but tomorrow they may have to take care of you. Be careful what you put in them. Don't talk to me today. It's what you put in them that might end up coming back on you. That's not my message. I'm just, that's, you know, what's But often, you never know what may happen. Life has a way. I'm telling you, man, life is something else. But Jesus is sweet, I know. Storm clouds may rise. What? Stormy winds may blow. Now tell the world. Without, hallelujah, man, I go 33 years later. Jesus is sweet, I know. I want you to know God is good. So let's go over to Genesis. You see, I already feel like I'm just bear with me a little bit. Pray for me. I don't want to be long. It's not something I intend to be. But I don't want to rush it so fast that you're like, what do you say? I want to say something that will help you. I, listen, my mindset is I, any of this, my brother on the roster could preach, and I would be glad to let them speak. It's, it fell on my it fell my lot today. But I'm a supporter. I, I, I don't mind yelling and screaming for nobody because it's all about Jesus at the end of the day. I want you to do good because I want to hear what God got to say. God's not going to talk to me today. I ain't in no competition. I'm up here. To, I want to see somebody say. And so let's go over to Genesis, the 50th chapter. And Let's start about the 15th verse. Let's pray for me today as I say it already. You know this story. But a lot of times, we want to get to the shout. We want to jump straight to the good part. The in-between, we don't talk about. But really, there are things that we're going through that the in-between is going to help you. I'm telling you right now, if, you, if you've been saved any time at all, that you understand that the enemy is going to try to make you feel like you I, God, the devil wants to isolate you. Yeah. Yeah. Notice what God said. He says a roaring lion. Yeah. Lion is not the fastest predator. He's not fast. He has to, he has to, he works in steps. He has to get close enough to that prey to be able to pounce on him. And if the enemy can get us so that we're so weighted down with the things that we're facing, then he can pounce on us and have us going another way before we even know it. By the time we wake up, we're down the road somewhere. Out of God's will, out of God's plan. So I want you to understand that because that's where I'm going here. I want to go to the 15th. This is at the end of the story, but I'm going to talk a little bit about Joseph. The 15th verse says this. Jacob had died. And they had burned him. So now, in this verse, you're going to find out that the brothers that, that sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, now dad is gone. Joseph going to show us what he really thinks about us. You don't have daddy to worry about breaking his heart. So now he's going to show us what he really thinks. This is what they say. The 15th verse says, and when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph would peradventure hate us. And will certainly quite us all the evil which we did unto him. They sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now. I want you to look at these verses real closely. Listen how these boys talk. The trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. 
And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. Uh oh. Something's happening. Something has changed here. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. <clears throat> Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Jesus. 
He told the story one time about how the servants were sent out and they rejected them. But he said, now I'm going to send my son. Y'all know that story? Yeah. Jesus said, I'm going to send my son. Oh, they'll honor my son. Right. They killed his son. Yeah. Somewhat akin to Joseph. They really wanted to kill Joseph. But it was through some little negotiation. Reuben said, no, not Reuben. Now, Judah said, no, let's not kill him. First of all, when they see this brother coming, let me back up just a little bit. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, it was Judah. But they hated him because he was his father's favorite. You got a coat of many colors. But then to exacerbate that hatred, Joseph tells them about a dream that God had given him. And in this dream, he was going to be over them. He was going to be ruler over them. And they weren't having it. It's already bad enough that dad favors you more than us. And there's nothing we can do about it. But we're going to take that hatred and that jealousy and pull it on you. The scripture says in Solomon, it says jealousy is cruel as the grave. It will cause you to do some things. That's why you got to get that toxicity out of you. Acknowledge that you have it there because if you don't, it's going to do a lot of damage. They, 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 they didn't recognize that they were so full of hatred. It was you. You are the problem. Y'all not going to talk to me today. A lot of times we feel the bitterness and anger. It's you. If you weren't the way you were, I wouldn't be the way I am. I want to help somebody here today. You got to recognize that you had this problem. They didn't. They carried out. And let me tell you this. God got this thing carefully orchestrated. Carefully. Jesus already knew before he ever came who the devil was, where the devil was. I thought it very curious in my mind. I'm just going to throw this out there. That is very interesting to me. He said, I've chosen 12. Let me get back to my story. I've chosen 12 and one, behold, one of you are a devil. Did he not say that class? Yes, it really amazed me what kept Jude, uh, uh, Judas there. What kept him there? Because the Bible says that he was one of you are a devil. So he didn't want what Jesus had to say. What, what kept him there? And then when I think about the fact that he kept the bag of money. money. Uh, not going to talk to me there. It was the money that kept him there. Wow. He was a thief. Yeah. He wasn't there for the gracious words that came out of Jesus' mouth. He wasn't there for the great miracles that Jesus wrought. But he was there because of what he could get out of it. And it was that that kept him there. Joseph's brothers saw no use for him. Here comes that dreamer. They are fired up there. They're angry because he didn't told the dream not once, twice. If God never tells you something, he's going to tell you twice. So they think he's coming down and they're plotting what they're going to do with him. And they're saying, look here, uh, let's kill him. And then we'll just say that an evil beast came upon him. And they said, no, that's not going to work. This is our brother. We don't want to share his blood. They decided to put him down in a pit. And when they put him in the pit, they saw these Ishmaelites coming, uh, going down to Egypt. They were going to do some merchandise. They were going to do some selling. And they decided they could make a profit of them. I think the Bible speaks that they, I think they might have sold them for 20 pieces of silver, something that wise. I can't remember exactly what it was, but they sold him for a profit. Kills an uh, animal and then told their father, do you know who caught this is? And it's through that process, Joseph was sold down into Egypt. A lot of times, like I said, we get to the part where we talk about the good. Oh, Joe, the better Larry here was better than his beginning. But getting to that point, a lot of times, and I was struggling with people tell us, I, and I've been told all my life, you get saved and walk with Jesus, God gonna bless you and God's gonna make a way for you. God gonna do this and you say, okay, when is it gonna happen? Because it, it don't feel like it's happening. My life seems to be, instead of going up, it seems to be going down, down, down. Our former pastor, El Ron, used to say that God, uh, while we're in A, God shows us C. He don't tell us about B. B 
tell you, if you take hold from a person, it will cause them to spiral out of control. Don't take nobody's hope. God infuses hope. Because the Bible said, hope make them not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in their hearts. So God tells Joseph, I'm going, I'm going to raise you up. The sun, the moon, the stars will make a basis to you. I got to tell you this now. Wow. And Joseph was shouting the victory. Like we do so often. Us are trying to guard us and keep us all. We just can't nobody shut us up. I know what God made me to know. And we're ready to tell everybody. Everybody ain't excited about your dream. Everybody ain't excited about your promotion. Be careful who you tell what God's going to do. And so what we find in this story, we get to this part. Jacob cried and his sons and his daughters tried to rise up and comfort him, but he would not be comforted. God was testing him as well. In his mind, Joseph was dead. As far as his brothers were concerned, he was dead. They agreed with their father. He was, dead. he was out of their life as far as they knew. This dream will not come to pass. That's the same thing I want to tell you. You in a situation, it looks like God couldn't have told me that. It's no way because things are going in the opposite direction. Until the scripture comes to my mind and says, in Isaiah 55, I believe in 8 and 9 and 10, it says, my thoughts are natural thoughts. Need all my ways, your ways. I always say that God does not promote up. God promotes down. Hallelujah. He don't promote up, he promotes down. When God tells you something, get ready to go down. But you're not going down to destroy you. You're not going down to, 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 to annihilate you. It looks that way. Your enemy is doing it for that reason. They'll write you up because they do want to get you out. They'll write you up because they do want you to be fine. The neighbors are doing this and this one is doing that. Yes, they mean it for just what they're doing. That's right. But God is getting ready to use it for his glory. of it. 
acceptance. It's accepting what I cannot control. I heard someone sing a song that said, accept what God allows. And he goes on and says, you're better off anyway. Joseph, I'm also so aware, and I'm trying to, as the Lord brings me around, because sometimes I get ahead of myself. They said there are five stages to grief. Five. Denial. I know that, that that is very true. You don't want to accept when my oldest brother died many years ago in the boat accident. I was not going to accept that he had died until I saw him in the casket. I was not. It, it's, some of us say, I'm still shocked. So when you're shocked, you kind of use laughing and moving along just like everything is all right, people. And sometimes people don't understand. If you never grieve, really grieve, you don't understand what it's like. Oh, you just smile another day. That don't mean they they not grieving. And now, anger is a villain. So often, especially when we lose a loved one, we get upset with God because we don't understand why God allowed this to happen. I'm trying to get you to understand Joseph's life. We paint the picture and want to make out like, oh, Joseph just hit, ended up being next to Pharaoh. There was a lot of anger involved. There was a denial. First of all, I can't believe these boys did this to me. You might have called them Negroes. I'm not sure. I can't believe these Jews did me like this. My brothers, I can't believe it. That's the first thing. I can't believe it. I can't accept it. Then he got angry. If I ever get out of here, I'm going to put something on them. Oh, just let me catch them. If I get out of here, I'm going back up there. I'm going to beat all of them. I don't know what he, what he was musing over, but he was angry. Then bargaining comes into play. What I could have done if I had just, if dad had to sit me down there to go check on them, which you got to remember now, he was heading down to give a report about what his brother was involved in. He's going down to find out how his brother's affair. So we're thinking all kinds of things. What could I have done to prevent that? I remember my mom saying that, that the thought came to her mind when my eldest brother died. The thought that came to her mind, he had told her, said, Mom, I'm going to go fishing. And she was like, the thought came to her mind, what if he drowned? But she didn't want to tell him that at the time. But after he died, then she thought to herself, I wish I had told him that. Well. So you're kind of bargaining with the idea of what you could have done. Then the pressure comes in. You start feeling hopeless. You start feeling helpless. You start having pity parties. You start trying to, when you get hopeless and, and, and start to feel in despair, that's why I understand why he said that, he, he said my tears were my meat day and night. When, when, when it says to me, where is thy God? That's a reality in a child of God's life. You start to find yourself in a downward spiral. You angry with everybody. You mad with the world and God. And you can listen. That's a natural process that you go through. You're not a demon. It's just a part of grief. Well. Then comes acceptance. Then comes the acceptance part. And I really believe when Joseph got down to part of his house, he began to accept what he couldn't control. But in that process, he went down. You know the story. Pharaoh, uh, part of his wife hit on Joseph. He refused. He ended down in the dungeon, the king's jail. And that place is a terrible place. It's the underground prison. Joseph is down there. It, it's not like these jails are here. At least they got a, a, a mattress, a, a small mattress and a bed to lay on. Who Joseph probably lay on those hard rocks. Dark down there, very little light. Probably wondering where in the world God is in this. I don't seem to make any sense of this. Have you ever been in a situation where you don't, you can't make sense of it? It don't seem like it fit. If I'm saved and I love the Lord, then everybody should love, everybody that love the Lord should love me. And it just seems like that should go that way. It don't work like that. Well. Some of the people that hurt you the most are the people that you consider to be your brother. The scripture says, I was wounded in the house of my friends. And so we find Joseph getting down to this part here. And 
and the brothers reckon, and if you know the story, you know all that Joseph put those boys through. But I want you to know that it was more Joseph trying to see where they were. He knew what God had done for him. He knew God had changed him. But he was wondering and trying to see what had God done for them. Because now I got to, it's something called, some, somebody used a phrase called the rules of engagement. I got to see how I'm going to deal with them. If they still got the cunning ways, if they still crafty, he might not be able to deal with them. But this proved that God was working on both ends. A lot of times we want to see uh, uh, those that have hurt us, we want to see them pay. We want to see God deal with them in our time. I want to see them get hurt. I want to see God. And I want you to know, you may never see them get their pain. It's not about them at all. I want to help you today. It's not about them. When you forgive, you're doing it more for you. You worry about if I forgive them, then they might do it again. That's not on you. If they don't change, God is going to deal with them in time. But get you right. Get you right. Yes, sir. Fix your heart. Because all it does is eat you up. It stunts your growth. It keeps you from going forward. So let that go. Understand that it is what it is. I didn't like it. I couldn't control it. I couldn't stop it. A lot of times we find ourselves damaged by it. We hurt by it. We wounded by it. But if we could just understand, like Joseph said, say, as for you, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. And I want you to understand that's the part that we rejoice in. God means it for good. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you an expected end. I want you to know you might find yourself in a situation where you feel like, Lord, where is the end? But I want you to know that the scripture lets us know that he gives us this comfort. That we may be able to comfort them who find themselves in any trouble. Let me tell you that Joseph said this in the same uh, 50th chapter. He said, let me read it. He says, the 21st, but as for you, Ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is 